Welcome to Control System Lecture Series. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about MCQs on frequency response, controllers, and state space analysis. Coming to first bit, the gain margin of a system is 0 decibels, then it represents A. Options are stable system, unstable system, marginally stable system, and conditionally stable system. Here, gain margin is the parameter in the Bode plot. In the Bode plot by using this gain margin value we can analyze the system that is given system in stable unstable or marginally stable system here gain margin is defined as the magnitude of a system at phase crossover frequency magnitude of a system at phase crossover frequency the conditions for analyzing the system depend upon this gain margin are if gain margin value is positive, then we can conclude that the given system is stable system. Similarly, if the gain margin value is negative, negative, then we can conclude that given system is unstable system. If gain margin value is 0 decibels, then we can conclude that the given system is marginally stable system. These are the conditions depending upon the gain margin value. Here in our problem gain margin value is 0 decibels. So the given system is marginally stable system. The option C is the correct answer for this bit. Second bit is a transfer function which has all its poles and zeros only in the left top of S plane. Then the transfer function is called options are minimum phase transfer function, all pass transfer function, non-minimum phase transfer function and all of the above. These type of bits are very important in gate point of view. Okay. Depending upon the location of poles and zeros, we are having three types of transfer function. We are having three types of transfer functions. If all the poles and zeros lies on the left half of S plane, this is a S plane. If all the poles and zeros lies on the left half of S plane, okay, these are poles and zeros which are lies on the left half of S plane, then the transfer function is called as minimum phase transfer function. Minimum phase transfer function. And second one is if the poles and zeros lies in the pole zero pattern, that is one pole, one zero, one pole, one zero, okay. If the poles and zeros lies in pole zero pattern, then the transfer function is called as all pass transfer function. All pass transfer function. And third case is if the poles and zeros are lies on the right half of S plane. Okay. Right half of S plane. Then the transfer function is called as non-minimum phase transfer function. Non-minimum phase transfer function. These are the types of transfer functions depending upon the location of poles and zeros. In our problem, poles and zeros lies on the left half of S plane. Then the transfer function is called as minimum phase transfer function. So option A is the correct answer for this bit. Coming to next bit, the locus traced by the tip of the phasor G of J omega as the frequency omega is varied from 0 to infinity is known as dashed plot. Options are root locus, polar plot, Bode plot and signal flow graph. Okay, this bit is very simple which is directly as the definition of polar plot. Here I am going to give brief brief idea about the polar plot. Okay, this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis and we are going to consider the angles. 0 degrees, minus 90, minus 180 and minus 270. And we are going to indicate the type of the system as well as order of the system. Here type of the system indicates the starting point of polar plot and here order of the system indicates the ending point of the polar plot. For example, consider transfer function 1 by 1 plus j omega t. In this type is 0 and order is 1. Type is 0 and order is 1. Depending upon the concept of polar plot. Here polar plot starts at the type of the system. Here type is 0. So polar plot starts here 
and order indicates the ending point of g of j omega so here order is 1 so we can draw the polar plot like this starting point to ending point this is the tip of the g of j omega by varying the omega value is that is omega is nothing but phase angle omega value is 0 to 90 degrees here otherwise we can consider 0 to infinity so the bit is locus traced by the tip of the phasor g of j omega as the omega is varies from 0 to infinity is known as polar plot so option b is the right answer for this bit coming to fourth bit mr and mp depends on options are damping factor time frequency and magnitude here mp and mp are the parameters in the frequency response here mr is the maximum peak value and mp is the maximum peak overshoot value and the formula for maximum peak is 1 by 2 zeta into square root of 1 minus zeta square similarly the formula for maximum peak overshoot is mp is equal to e power minus zeta pi e power minus zeta pi by square root of 1 minus zeta square okay these two are the formulas for mr and mp if we consider these formulas here mr is depends upon the zeta value similarly mp also depends upon the zeta value here zeta is known as damping factor zeta is known as damping factor so mr and mp depends upon the damping factor option a is the right answer for this bit coming to next one that is the body plot also called as dash plot options are logarithmic root locus frequency and none of the above i think everyone know about the body plot body plot consisting of two plots one is the magnitude plot and second one is a phase plot these two plots we are going to draw on the semi log graph or logarithmic graph semi log or logarithmic graph by varying the frequency values by varying the frequency values we are going to draw the magnitude as well as phase plot so body plots also known as semi log or logarithmic plots so option a is the right answer for this bit coming to next one if a system is said to have a damping factor zeta is equal to 0 0.5532 with the natural frequency omega n is equal to 2 radian per second then what will be the value of resonant frequency omega r the options are 1.2456 radians per second 1.7352 radian per second and 2.3421 radian per second and finally 3.66 radian per second this bit is depending upon the resonant frequency that is frequency response characteristics okay if we know the resonant frequency formula then the, this bit is very simple okay the formula for resonant frequency omega r is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus 2 zeta square this is the formula for resonant frequency in frequency response here omega n is a natural frequency and zeta is the damping factor we know these two values omega n value is 2 and zeta value is 0 0.5532 okay substitute those two values and calculate then we are getting resonant frequency omega r is equal to 1.2456 1.2456 radian per second that is option a is the right answer for this bit coming to next one if the resonant peak is estimated to 5 which among the following would be the correct value of damping options are zeta is equal to 0.3 zeta is equal to 1 zeta is equal to 3.2 and finally zeta is equal to 5.5 .5. this bit is related to resonant peak and damping factor which is related to the parameter of a frequency response the relation between resonant peak and damping factor is given as resonant peak mr is equal to 1 by 
2 zeta into square root of 1 minus zeta square. In this zeta is nothing but damping factor. We have to find out the zeta value. In the problem, we know resonant peak value is 5. Just to substitute resonant peak value and simplify the expression. By simplifying expression, we are getting zeta is equal to 0 0.3 that is damping factor value is 0.3 so option a is the right answer for this bit simply depending upon the resonant peak expression we are going to calculate the zeta value resonant peak expression is mr mr is equal to 1 by 2 zeta into square root of 1 minus zeta square simply substitute the mr value and simplify this expression then we are getting zeta is equal to 0.3 these type of bits are very important in gate point of view. Coming to next bit, how is the sinusoidal transfer function obtained from the system transfer function in frequency domain? Options are replacement of j omega by s, replacement of s by omega, replacement of s by j omega and finally replacement of omega by s. This bit is depends upon the definition of sinusoidal transfer function. The definition for sinusoidal transfer function is transfer function obtained by substituting s is equal to j omega in the given transfer function. In the given transfer function, then we are going to get the sinusoidal transfer function. In the given transfer function, we are going to substitute j omega in place of s the resultant transfer function is called the sinusoidal transfer function so option c is the right answer for this bit that is replacement of s by j omega next bit is which plot in frequency domain represents the two separate plots of magnitude and phase against frequency in logarithmic value options are polar plots, Bode plots, Nyquist plots and all of the above. This bit is related to the techniques in the frequency domain response. The main techniques in frequency domain response are Bode plots, polar plots and Nyquist plots. Polar plots and Nyquist plots. Here Bode plot is a plot obtained by two types of plots that is magnitude and phase plots by varying the frequency in the logarithmic scale and here polar plot is a plot traced by the tip of the g of j omega by varying the by varying the omega from 0 to infinity and coming to nyquist plot nyquist plot is the extension of polar plot okay in the given bit, which plot represents the two separate plots, magnitude and phase against logarithmic scale? That is, according to these techniques, first one, that is Bode plot having the two plots in the logarithmic scale or semi-log graph. So, option B is the right answer for this bit. Next bit is the magnitude and phase relationship between dash input and steady state output is called frequency response. Options are step input, ramp input, sinusoidal and parabolic input. This bit is related to the definition of frequency response. Here frequency response is defined as the magnitude and phase relationship between sinusoidal input and steady state output is called the frequency response. Frequency response. So, here the type of the input is sinusoidal. Type of the input is sinusoidal. So, option C is the right answer for this bit. Next bit is if zeta approaches to 0, the peak resonance would, the options are also be a 0, be unity, tend to infinity, become equal to the peak overshoot. Okay, these type of bits are very important in gate point of view. Okay, this bit is related to resonance peak. Okay, the formula for resonance peak MR is given as MR is equal to 1 by 2 zeta into 1 by 2 zeta into square root of 1 minus zeta square. 
okay this is the formula for resonant peak here question is if zeta is approaches to zero means by considering zeta is equal to zero we have to find out the mr value okay if zeta is zero mr value becomes one by zero that is nothing but infinity so if zeta is zero mr peak resonance is infinity so option c is the right answer for this one that is if zeta is approaches to zero the peak resonance would be tend to infinity next bit is if the damping of the system becomes equal to zero which condition of the resonance frequency is likely to occur options are omega r is equal to omega d omega r is greater than omega n omega r is less than omega n and finally omega r is equal to omega n if you are preparing for gate we have to concentrate these type of bits that is if the damping of the system becomes equal to zero means damping in the sense zeta is equal to zero which condition of the resonance frequency is likely to occur the formula for resonance frequency omega r is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus 2 zeta square this is the formula for resonance frequency in frequency response here the condition is omega condition is zeta is equal to 0 just substitute zeta value 0 in this one that is omega n is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus 2 into 0 square is nothing but 0 so finally we are getting omega n is equal to, that is omega r is equal to omega n this is not a omega n man this is omega r so finally if zeta is equal to 0 we are getting omega r is equal to omega n that is resonance frequency is equal to the natural frequency so the option d is the right answer for this one these types these type of bits are very important in gate point of view next bit is for a stable closed loop system the gain at phase crossover frequency should always be options are less than minus 20 decibels less than 0 decibels less than minus 6 decibels and finally greater than 0 decibels this bit is related to Bode plot here gain aid phase crossover frequency is nothing but gain margin okay depending upon the gain margin we can conclude the type of the system that is if gain margin value is positive then we can conclude that system is stable similarly if the gain margin value is negative we can conclude that system is unstable if gain margin value is zero then we can conclude that system is marginally stable in the given condition for a system for a stable closed loop system means if the system is stable then gain value gain margin value should be positive okay in the given option okay option d is the right answer that is gain margin value is greater than zero decibels coming to next bit in qs plane nyquist plot is symmetrical about options are imaginary axis real axis origin and none of the above this bit is related to nyquist plot and directly definition of nyquist plot nyquist plot having the real axis and imaginary axis and here Nyquist plot is the extension of polar plot here polar plot is the trace of the g of j omega by varying the omega value from 0 to infinity and the starting point of polar plot indicates the type and order of the system indicates the ending point of polar plot and the mirror image of this one is the Nyquist plot this is the c1 and if we consider this is c2 c2 is the mirror image of c1 and this is the real axis so nyquist plot is the nyquist plot is symmetrical about real axis so option b is the right answer for this bit coming to next bit 
what is the value of steady state error in closed loop control system options are zero unity infinity and unpredictable this bit is related to controllers here steady state error is defined as difference between final output and desired output steady state error is a difference between final output and desired output desired output generally in closed loop control system final output is equal to the desired output means these two values are same if these two values are same means we are getting steady state error ESS is equal to zero so option A is the right answer for this bit coming to next bit which among the following is the example of closed loop control system options are automatic washing machine electric iron box bread toaster electric hay dryer this is direct bit which represents the examples of closed loop control systems examples of closed loop control systems are traffic control system traffic control system room heating system room heating system and washing machine system here washing machine in the given option we are having the washing machine so washing machine represents the closed loop control system so option a is the right answer for this one coming to next bit steady state error is usually specified in terms of options are error constants damping factor speed of response and bandwidth okay here steady state error is defined as the difference between final output and desired output difference between final output and desired output is nothing but steady state error and generally this steady state error going to define in terms of error constants we are having three types of error constants those are first one is the position error constant which is represented as kp second one is the velocity error constant and third one is the acceleration error constants okay these are the constants okay in these terms we are going to express the steady state error ess so here steady state error is specified in terms of error constants so option a is the right answer coming to next one the compensator for the system can be options are electrical mechanical hydraulic and all of the above here compensator is nothing but it is a circuit which compensate the output signal and we are having different types of compensating circuits those different types of electrical compensators mechanical compensators hydraulic compensators hydraulic compensators but in all practical applications we are going to use the electrical compensators so the option for this bit is all of the mentioned that is all of the above that is option d is the right answer for this bit Nine, 19th bit is lead compensator speeds of the transient response and increases the margin of stability of a system it is true or false okay this type of bits make some confusion that is lead compensator is mainly a derivative compensator derivative compensator in derivative compensator transient response is increases if transient response is increases means the bandwidth of a system is increases if bandwidth is increases means the stability of a system is increases so lead compensator speeds of the transient response it is correct and it increases the margin of stability so it is a true well, true statement regarding the lead compensator or derivative compensator so option a is the right answer for this bit next bit is with regard to the filtering capacity the lead compensator and lag compensators are respectively options are low pass and high pass filters high pass and low pass filters both high pass filters and both low pass filters okay this bit is very important in gate point of view okay 
with regard to the filtering capacity is nothing but filter property okay filter property here filter is a circuit which removes the unwanted frequencies which removes the unwanted frequencies if we consider lead compensator lead compensator allows only high frequencies allows only high frequencies that is nothing but the filter which allows the high frequencies by eliminating the lower order frequencies is nothing but higher order frequency here lead compensator allows the higher order frequency so lead compensator is a high pass filter high pass filter similarly lag compensator allows only lower order frequencies lower order frequencies the property of low pass filter is it allows the lower order frequencies by eliminating the higher order frequencies so lag compensator act as a low pass filter low pass filter lead compensator allows the higher frequencies so lead compensator is a high pass filter lag compensator allows the low frequencies means it act as a low pass filter so coming to options lead compensator is a high pass and lag compensator is a low pass so option b is the right answer coming to next bit what is the effect of phase lag compensation on the performance of servo system options are for a given relative stability velocity constant is increased velocity constant is decreased bandwidth is increases and time response is increases this bit is related to the lag compensator and the property of lag compensator is steady state where steady state error value is decreases steady state error is represented as ess that value is decreases and we know relation between steady state value steady state error and velocity constant the relation between these two is given as velocity constant kv is equal to 1 by ess that is 1 by steady state error coming to property of lag compensator here ess is, is decreases means steady state error is decreases by decreasing this steady state error the velocity constant going to increase so by decreasing the steady state error the velocity constant is increases so coming to options for a given relative stability velocity constant is increased so option a is the right answer for this bit coming to next bit proportional controller options are decreases steady state error and improves the stability rise time decreases transient response becomes poorer increases the steady state error this bit is depends upon the property of proportional controller the property of proportional controller is output is proportional to the input that is output is proportional to the input means output follows the input if output follows the input means steady state error value is going to increases that is the property of proportional controller coming to options steady state error is increases means option d is the right answer for this one increases the steady state error coming to next bit that is the transfer function for the state representation of the continuous time linear time invariant systems which are given by state equation and output equation that is here dq by dt is nothing but q dot of t which is nothing but state equation and this one is the output equation this is this bit is related to the state space analysis for a state model which are having the state equation and output equation the transfer function is given as c into si minus a whole inverse c into si minus a whole inverse b plus d b plus d so coming to options first option is c into si minus a whole inverse b plus d 
so the transfer function for a given state equation and output equation is this one c into s a minus a whole inverse b plus d so option a is the right answer for this bit coming to next bit state space analysis is applicable for non-linear systems and for multiple input and output systems true or false this is related to state space analysis here state state space analysis can be applicable to linear systems non-linear systems time variant systems time invariant systems single input single output system multiple input multiple output system etc but coming to transfer function analysis it can be applicable to linear time invariant systems only linear time invariant systems only so the given statement state space analysis is applicable for non-linear systems and for multiple input and output systems so it is a true statement so option a is the right answer for this one next one is the values of characteristic equation is given by eigenvalues state matrix eigenvector none of the above here characteristic equation is nothing but the equation obtained by equating the denominator of a transfer function is equal to zero here the roots of this equation are known as poles as well as eigenvalues that is by equating the denominator of a transfer function we are getting one equation that equation is called characteristic equation the roots of this characteristic equation are called poles as well as eigenvalues so option a is the right answer for this bit next bit is the diagonalizing matrix is also known as options are eigen matrix model matrix constant matrix and state matrix here diagonal matrix is nothing but the matrix which are which is having only diagonal elements are not equal to zero and remaining non-diagonal elements are equal to zero that type of matrix is called diagonal matrix and this diagonal other name of diagonal matrix is the model matrix model matrix so option b is the right answer for this one here diagonal matrix is nothing but the matrix which having the diagonal elements are not equal to zero and remaining non-diagonal elements are equal to zero here the other name for diagonal matrix is modal matrix so option b is the right answer for this one coming to next bit if the gain of the critically damped system is increased it will behave as options are auxiliary system critically damped over damped and under damped system this bit is very 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 important in gate point of view and this bit is related to relation between gain and damping factor the relation between gain and damping factor is given as gain is equal to 1 by square root of damping factor zeta and the condition in the given bit is the gain of a critically damped system is increased okay that is gain going to increases if gain is increased means the zeta value going to decreases depending upon this zeta value we are going to define the system if zeta value is equal to zero then system is called undamped system if zeta value is less than one zeta value is less than one the system is called under damped system if zeta is greater than one the system is called over damped system and zeta is equal to one that is critically damped system means for a critically damped system the gain value is increases means this zeta value going to decreases less than the one means the system is under damped system so option d is the right answer for this bit coming to next bit a system is said to be dash if it is possible to transfer the system state from initial state to any desired state in finite finite interval of time options are controllable observable cannot be determined controllable and observable this bit is directly definition of a controllability of a system 
if the system is said to be controllable it is possible to transfer transfer a state that is state of a system from initial state to any desired state in a finite interval of time in a finite interval of time that type of system is called controllable system so option a is the right answer for this one coming to next bit a system is said to be dashed if every state can be completely identified by measurements of outputs at finite time interval options are controllable observable cannot be determined controllable and observable it is the definition of observability a system is said to be observable if every state is completely observable every state can be completely observable or identified by measurement of outputs by measurement of outputs in a finite interval of time okay so the option b is the right answer for this one next bit is for the pole factor 1 by s plus 5 the corner frequency is options are omega is equal to 1 by 5 radian per radian per second omega is equal to 5 omega is equal to minus 5 omega is equal to minus 1 by 5 for finding the corner frequency first we have to find out the time constant form time constant form is 1 plus s tau okay here we are having s plus 5 we have to convert this s plus 5 into 1 plus s tau form okay for converting this one we have to take the 5 as a common then we are getting 1 plus 5 into 1 plus s by 5 and here t is equal to 1 by 5 that is tau is equal to 1 by 5 we know frequency frequency is equal to 1 by t 1 by t substitute this t value so we are getting corner frequency is 5 radian per second so option b is the right answer for this bit next bit is at the gain crossover frequency omega is equal to 8 radian per second the angle is minus 195 degrees then the type of the system is stable unstable marginally stable and all of the above depending upon the phase margin we are going to conclude the type of the system that is if phase margin is positive then we can conclude that given system is stable system similarly if phase margin is negative we can conclude that system is unstable system if phase margin is zero then we can conclude that given system is marginally stable system so by finding the phase margin we can conclude the type of the system regarding this data the formula for finding phase margin is given as phase margin is equal to 180 plus phase angle at gain crossover frequency that is phase angle at gain crossover frequency omega gc we know phase angle at this frequency was the phase angle minus 195 degrees that is equal to 180 plus minus 195 we are getting phase margin as minus 15 degrees minus 15 degrees as the phase margin okay here this phase margin value is negative if phase margin is negative what are the type of the system unstable system so option b is the right answer for this one next bit is at gain crossover frequency the options are magnitude is 0 decibels magnitude is 1 decibel magnitude is minus 20 decibels and plus 20 decibels this bit is depending upon the definition of gain crossover frequency gain crossover frequency is defined as the frequency at which magnitude is unity or zero decibels magnitude is unity or zero decibels so the option a in option a this is the magnitude which is zero decibels option b is the magnitude which is one decibels and these two are minus 20 and plus 20 so for this option a is the right answer so 
the frequency at which magnitude is unity or zero decibels next one is with a lead compensator maximum phase lead occurs at the dash of two corner frequencies options are sum of geometric mean of arithmetic mean of and mean of we know lead compensator the transfer function of lead compensator is given as 1 plus s tau by 1 plus s alpha tau into alpha okay here corner frequencies are given as omega 1 is equal to 1 by tau 1 by tau and second corner frequency omega 2 is given as 1 by alpha tau here the maximum phase lead occurs the geometric mean of these two frequencies that is maximum phase lead occurs at the geometric mean of corner frequency 1 and corner frequency 2 this is the condition for getting the maximum phase lead so the answer is geometric mean of two corner frequencies so option b is the right answer for this bit next one is at the gain crossover frequency omega is equal to 12 radian per second angle is minus 200 degrees then the phase margin is options are 15 degrees minus 195 degrees minus 20 degrees and plus 195 degrees the formula for phase margin is given as phase margin is equal to 180 plus phase angle at gain crossover frequency that is 180 plus phase angle at gain crossover frequency we know phase angle at gain crossover frequency that is at gain crossover frequency 12 radian per second phase angle is minus 200 degrees so phase margin is equal to 180 minus 200 degrees then we are getting minus 20 degrees as the phase margin so option c is the answer for this one coming to next bit that is the lead compensator act as a dash filter options are low pass high pass band pass and band elimination okay here just by knowing the property of lead compensator we can conclude that which type of filter the property of lead compensator is it allows the only higher order frequencies higher order frequencies coming to filters filter is a circuit which allows a certain amount of frequencies by eliminating the remaining amount of frequencies if we consider low pass filter low pass filter which allows the lower order harmonics by eliminating the higher order harmonics and if we consider a high pass filter high pass filter allows the higher order harmonics by compensating or by eliminating the lower order frequencies here the properties of lead compensator and high pass filter both are same which allows the higher order frequencies by eliminating the lower order frequencies so here lead compensator act as a high pass filter that is option b is the correct answer for this bit coming to next one that is the state equations and the output equations together are called the dash of the system options are response of the system dynamic equations state equations and state of a system this bit is related to the state model okay state model consisting of two types of equations that is state equation which is represented as x dot of t and output equations output equations which is represented as y of t okay the combination of state equation and output equation is known as dynamic equations of a system dynamic equations of a system so for this bit option b is the right answer the combination of state equation and output equation of a state model is known as dynamic equations of a system next bit is the number of state variables of a system is equal to options are number of energy storage elements present in the system 
the number of differentiators present in the system sum of the integrators and differentiators and none of the above this bit is also related to the state model okay for representing the state model we require the two type of two types of equations that is state equations and output equations okay for finding state equations and output equations we require the number of state variables okay this number of state variables going to identify by observing the number of energy storage elements energy storage elements present in the system these energy storage elements are nothing but inductors and capacitors inductors and capacitors these energy storage elements also known as integrators so by identifying the integrators we can find out the state variables number of state variables that is nothing but the number of energy storage elements present in the system is the right answer for this one that is number of state variables gives the number of energy storage elements or number of integrators present in the system next one is an n by n matrix is said to be non singular if the rank of the matrix r is equal to options are r is equal to 2n r is r is equal to n by 2 r is equal to n r is equal to 10n here non singular means if the determinant of a matrix is not equal to 0 that type of matrix is called non singular matrix here n represents the order of a system and r represents the rank of a system here rank is nothing but number of non zero rows this number of non zero rows indicates the order of the system so r is equal to n a matrix is said to be non singular if the rank of a matrix is equal to order of the matrix so the option c is the right answer for this one next bit is pi of s is called as options are resultant matrix resolution matrix state transition matrix and transfer matrix here pi of s is given as pi of s is equal to si minus a whole inverse si minus a whole inverse this is the formula of pi of s and by applying the inverse laplace transform we are going to get the inverse laplace transform of pi of s is equal to inverse laplace transform of si minus a whole inverse si minus a whole inverse and this is called state transition matrix this is the state transition matrix which is denoted as stm and this is called the resultant matrix that is pi of s is called the resultant matrix so option a is the right answer for this one next bit is the concepts of controllability and observability were introduced by options are gibson kalman gilbert and none of the above the concepts of controllability and observability were introduced by kalman okay by using kalman's controllability test and kalman's observability test we are going to identify controllability and observability of a given system okay coming to controllability test kalman's controllability test is given as ct is equal to b ab a square b a square b up to so on a power n minus 1 into b a power n minus 1 into b this is the kalman's controllability test where n represents the number of that is order of the given matrix similarly kalman's observability test is given as ot is equal to c transpose a transpose into c transpose up to so on up to so on a transpose whole power n minus 1 into c transpose here also c transpose here also n represents the order of the given matrix 
okay this is the kalman's controllability test and this is the kalman's observability test these two are introduced by kalman okay so for this bit option b is the right answer